Greetings, dear subscribers and casual listeners of my channel. There are many theories explaining why Percy started behaving strangely and even effectively abandoned his family at some point. Today, we will examine, in my opinion, the most unusual one, which suggests that Percy was under the Imperious Curse for three years. We can conduct a small experiment by observing Percy in the first three books and then in the last three. At the beginning of the story, Percy sometimes irritates us with his excessive meticulousness and overly zealous adherence to rules and order. Yes, he's a bit of a pedant and perfectionist, but he is still a kind-hearted and friendly young man. However, starting around the middle of The Goblet of Fire, his behaviour becomes somewhat unnatural. Returning to the topic of the article, it should be noted that the Imperious Curse is significantly different from the other two unforgivable curses. Firstly, a person under the influence of this spell does not experience any pain or physical effects. Secondly, a wizard who uses the Imperious Curse on someone does not need to be constantly near their victim. For example, Barty Crouch Jr. moved freely around the castle while the real Moody was locked in a trunk in his office. Thirdly, with special skills and strong willpower, a wizard under the Imperious Curse can shake off its effects and regain control of their thoughts and desires. Another important point, which will be useful later, is that the Imperious Curse, like other spells, ceases when the caster dies. We see this when Dumbledore dies, and his binding spell on Harry is lifted, and when many wizards across the country wake up from the Imperious Curse after Voldemort's death. Now let's return to Percy. Who cast the Imperious Curse on him? When did this happen? And how did Percy eventually break free from it? We mentioned earlier that by the middle of The Goblet of Fire, Percy's behaviour becomes suspicious. Therefore, we will consider this moment as the starting point for the Imperious Curse, which coincides logically with when Barty Crouch Sr. stops going to work, officially due to illness, but actually because he began resisting Voldemort's Imperious Curse. Barty Crouch Sr. not going to work is strange, but to avoid more suspicion, he needed a top-notch deputy who wouldn't ask too many questions. Percy turned out to be the perfect deputy. And why? Because he had owned the Rat Scabbers for ten years, who, as we know, was Peter Pettigrew in his Animagus form. This situation was a real stroke of luck for Voldemort. During the time Peter lived with Percy, he got to know him well, learning what he liked and feared. Pettigrew became the perfect person to cast the Imperious Curse on Percy. This could have happened during one of Percy's visits to Crouch Senior, perhaps to get some work documents. Several other points suggest that Percy was under the Imperious Curse, acting under someone else's will. During the second task of the Triwizard Tournament, Percy gave Harry high marks, which was uncharacteristic for the rule-abiding Percy we knew. Harry broke several rules. He completed the task late, brought back two hostages, and nearly missed the start. Another notable point is when Harry nearly missed the start of the second task, Percy reacted angrily and annoyedly. This could be explained by the Imperious Curse, as Voldemort needed Harry to reach the final and have the best chance to get to the cup. Without completing the second task, this would have been very difficult. The Imperious Curse also explains why Percy so drastically turned away from his family. The hurtful words he said about his father's financial situation show that Pettigrew had studied Percy's weak points and exploited them, causing a rift in one of the strongest families in the wizarding world. Finally, let's discuss when and why Percy broke free from the Imperious Curse. Recall the scene of the Battle of Hogwarts when Percy returns to his family and admits he was wrong. What made you come to your senses, Percy? George asked. It started a long time ago, said Percy, wiping his eyes under his glasses with the hem of his travel cloak. But I needed to find a way out, and in the Ministry, it's not easy. This time frame aligns with Peter Pettigrew's death at Malfoy Manor, 
when his own silver hand strangled him. The events at Malfoy Manor occur around mid-April, and the Battle of Hogwarts took place on May 2nd. This was enough time for Percy to break free from the imperious curse after Pettigrew's death and seek a way out of the Voldemort-controlled ministry. So the first thing he did after the spell lifted was return to his family. Many Harry Potter fans have wondered what could have driven Percy Weasley to act as he did. Understanding Percy's motives, we see that his behaviour has deeper roots than it may appear. Percy is often portrayed negatively, overshadowing his positive traits and the circumstances affecting his behaviour. Let's consider five reasons why this attitude toward Percy Weasley was unfair. Reason number one, he cared about his family, but they avoided him. Percy Weasley often cared for his family, even if it wasn't always apparent to others. He kept track of Ron and Harry to ensure their safety. In Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, Percy was concerned for his younger brother and his friend when they frequently got into trouble. He might have seemed meticulous and strict, but his concern was genuine. Percy wanted his brothers to be safe and avoid problems, even if he wasn't always around. One of the most notable examples of his care was his attitude towards his younger sister, Ginny. In Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, Percy tried to lift her spirits after the horrific events related to Tom Riddle's diary. He tried to support her, despite being preoccupied with his studies and personal matters. Percy knew Ginny needed support and did everything he could to comfort her. Unfortunately, his efforts often went unnoticed. One of Percy's most significant acts of care was during the second task of the Triwizard Tournament in Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. When Ron was trapped in an underwater cave, Percy didn't hesitate and rushed to help. He couldn't just stand by and watch his younger brother in danger. This act showed that Percy was willing to risk himself for his family's safety. However, his heroic deed went unrecognised. His family's reaction to his care was often unfair. His siblings didn't always understand his intentions and found his interference annoying. They saw him as too meticulous and boring, not seeing the genuine care behind it. Even when Percy tried to do something good, his actions were often met with hostility or ignored altogether. One such instance occurred when Percy tried to warn Harry about safety rules at school. In Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, Percy reminded Harry of the need to follow school rules and avoid trouble. Harry and Ron saw this as yet another display of Percy's bureaucratic strictness, not as genuine concern for a friend's safety. Percy was often misunderstood even by his mother, although she tried to protect him from mockery. In one scene in Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, Molly Weasley expresses her pride in Percy's achievements, but fails to notice how much his siblings' taunts hurt him. Percy felt lonely and unappreciated despite all his efforts. Reason number two. Molly Weasley was not biased toward him, but rather protective. Molly Weasley always tried to protect Percy from the taunts of other family members. This was noticeable from the first books, where Percy's brothers, especially the twins Fred and George, often mocked his strictness and adherence to rules. In one scene in Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, when Fred and George mock Percy for his ambitions to work at the Ministry of Magic, Molly sharply rebukes them, reminding them that his work is important and deserves respect. Molly always tried to praise Percy's achievements. She was proud that he became a Hogwarts prefect and never missed a chance to commend him for his excellent grades. In Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, Molly even wrote a letter to Percy expressing her pride in his successes and stating that she always believed in him. These moments show that the mother saw Percy not only as an ambitious young man, but also as a caring and responsible son. The myth of Molly's favouritism toward Percy is often exaggerated. In reality, her support was a form of protection, not favouritism. She saw how the rest of the family mocked his aspirations 
and tried to balance this with her support. Percy never exploited this for his gain. In Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, he even avoided contact with his family to not seem privileged and to avoid more taunts. Percy always strove for independence and self-sufficiency. He didn't seek special attention from his mother, but rather tried to prove his worth through his own achievements. When he became Barty Crouch's assistant in Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, it was his own accomplishment, of which he was proud despite his brother's mockery. Molly supported him, but Percy paved his path in the magical world. The family often misunderstood Percy's privileges. His ambitions and successes seemed to them a manifestation of arrogance and a desire to stand out. However, Percy never tried to use his mother's support for personal gain. In one scene in Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, he refuses Molly's offer to help him at the Ministry, preferring to achieve everything on his own. This shows that Percy was ready to fight for his goals without anyone's help. The family's misunderstanding of Percy's privileges caused many conflicts. His siblings saw him as a mama's boy, not understanding that his achievements resulted from hard work and determination. In Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, Percy distances himself from the family to prove he can handle things on his own without his mother's supposed favoritism. This decision was hard for him, but he deemed it necessary. Reason number three. He was seen only from Harry's biased perspective. Percy Weasley's perception by Harry Potter and other characters was always biased. From the beginning, Harry formed his opinion of Percy through Ron and the twins, Fred and George's perspective. They often mocked their older brother for his adherence to rules and ambitions. In Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, Ron speaks of Percy with a hint of disdain. Harry adopts this attitude without considering what lies behind Percy's behaviour. This bias from Harry heavily influenced the readers. Since the books are written from his point of view, Percy is often seen as arrogant and boring. In Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, Harry and Ron laugh at how seriously Percy takes his job at the Ministry of Magic. Readers, following the main character, also start to see Percy as a comedic figure rather than a complex and multifaceted character. However, changes in Percy's perception begin to show by the end of the series. In Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, Percy returns to his family and acknowledges his mistakes. His bravery and determination at this moment show him in a different light. Harry sees Percy fighting alongside the Order of the Phoenix, risking his life to save his loved ones. This drastically changes his opinion of Ron's older brother. Percy's acknowledgement of his mistakes was an important moment not only for him, but also for his family. In the final battle, he asks for forgiveness from his parents and siblings, showing that he realises his errors. This moment even touches Harry, who had previously only seen Percy as a strict bureaucrat. I was a fool, says Percy, and these words resonate with readers, showing that everyone deserves a second chance. Harry's and consequently the reader's perception of Percy changes gradually. As Percy's true motivations are revealed, his actions become more understandable and elicit more sympathy. In Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, he makes the difficult choice of breaking ties with his family to follow his beliefs. This act is now seen not as a betrayal, but as a demonstration of his principles and quest for justice. Seeing Percy through Harry's biased perspective also illustrates how easy it is to misjudge someone based on others' opinions. Harry himself admits that he didn't know Percy well enough to judge him. In Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, he sees Percy suffering from the family rift, but continuing on his path, which earns Harry's respect and understanding. Reason number four. No one explained the Order's motives to him. Percy Weasley often misunderstood the motives of the Order of the Phoenix because he was simply not given the full information. His parents, Arthur and Molly, 
tried to shield their children from the dark events of the past. They rarely spoke about the terrible sacrifices made by the Order's members. In Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, Molly Weasley forbids Harry and the other children from listening to adult discussions about Voldemort and the Order's actions. Percy, being preoccupied with his affairs, remained unaware of many aspects of this struggle. When Percy began his career at the Ministry of Magic, he believed he was serving justice and the law. He was not told that the Ministry itself could be corrupt and dangerous. In Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, the Ministry actively discredited Dumbledore and Harry, and Percy believed the official version of events. No one explained to him why the Order of the Phoenix acted against the Ministry and what sacrifices were made for the safety of the wizarding world. The lack of information caused Percy to distrust his family's statements. When Arthur and Molly tried to explain to him that the Ministry was mistaken, Percy couldn't believe them. He thought his parents had fallen under Dumbledore's influence and that of other Order members, whom he considered radicals. In Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, he openly accuses his family of treason against the Ministry and breaks ties with them. Percy couldn't understand why his family chose the Order's side. To him, the Ministry always symbolised order and safety. He saw how the Ministry worked for the benefit of society and couldn't believe it could be corrupt or wrong. When his parents and brothers spoke to him about the dangers from the Ministry, he perceived it as delusion and baseless fears. Percy's reaction to the events was quite understandable. He didn't see the whole picture and was confident he was acting correctly. In Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, he tries to prove his loyalty to the Ministry, even if it means breaking with his family. His distrust of his family's statements about the Ministry was due to a lack of full information and understanding. Understanding why Percy reacted with distrust is crucial to fully grasp his character. He wasn't a traitor, but simply someone who believed in the system and lacked access to information that would change his viewpoint. In Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, he finally realises that the Ministry used him and that his family was right. This moment of realisation was crucial for his subsequent reconciliation with his loved ones. Percy didn't have the opportunity to learn about the Order's sacrifices and feats, which could have changed his opinion. He didn't know that Order members like Sirius Black and Albus Dumbledore risked their lives for the safety of all wizards. In Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, he didn't even guess the scale of the threat from Voldemort and his followers. Reason number five. His ambitions were never encouraged. Percy Weasley's ambitions were evident from the start. He aimed for success, became a prefect at Hogwarts, received excellent grades and got a job with Barty Crouch. Percy was proud of his achievements and genuinely believed that his successes would benefit his family and the entire wizarding community. In Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, he enthusiastically talks about his work at the Ministry, hoping for recognition and support. However, his achievements were often mocked. His brothers, particularly Fred and George, constantly joked about Percy. They didn't take his work seriously and found his career ambitions laughable. In Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, Fred and George joke about Percy, calling him Prefect with a sneer, undermining his self-esteem. Percy felt lonely and misunderstood, despite all his successes. Family and friends didn't support his ambitions. They saw him as strict and boring, not understanding how important his achievements were to him. In Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, even his younger brother Ron doesn't support Percy, instead laughing at him with Fred and George. Harry also adopted this viewpoint, further reinforcing the biased attitude towards Percy. Mockery and lack of support profoundly impacted Percy. He felt that his efforts were not appreciated and that no one understood him. In Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, Percy tries to impress his family with his achievements, but receives only mockery in response. 
This led him to distance himself from his family, seeking recognition and respect at the ministry. Percy sought approval and support in his work because his efforts were not valued at home. In Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, he feels like an outsider among his family, despite his significant accomplishments. His ambitions and desire to build a career at the ministry only caused irritation and misunderstanding from his family. Lack of support from his loved ones pushed Percy to break with his family. He genuinely believed that his successes at the Ministry of Magic could benefit everyone, including his relatives. In Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, he leaves home and chooses to work for the Ministry, hoping his actions would be understood and appreciated. This decision was difficult, but Percy deemed it necessary to achieve his goals. Percy couldn't find understanding among friends and family, further deepening his rift with them. In Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, he realises how much he was underestimated. He sees how his siblings, despite all difficulties, support each other and understands that he was left without support. This realisation becomes a turning point for him. Thank you for watching until the end. I hope this means you found it interesting. If so, don't forget to like, share your opinions in the comments and subscribe to the channel.